I'm Reverend Natalie Jean, and this is the Infinite Elevation Hour. I'm here with my co-host, Erlene Germain, and we are here to give you some wonderful tips on spirituality, give you some current events and how spirituality works in the universe and throughout the world. So today, we would like to focus on the aspects of cards, tarot cards, um, angel cards. Um, we're going to focus on the aspect of color, and I'm going to talk about my girl, Emma Curtis Hopkins, her book, Judgment Series and Spiritual Science, which is a fabulous book. Um, but we're going to start off with our favorite topic, our current events. Today I'd like to talk about <clears throat> the aspect of forgiveness. Okay. Because it seems that a lot of people have um, a hard time with forgiveness. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because this whole issue with um, Rihanna and Chris Brown. And a lot of people have been talking about this and they have a very big issue about the fact that Chris D Brown a couple of years ago uh, beat her in her face um, and she has since forgiven him. In fact, she has told him that she will go to his court hearing, his parole hearing or whatever, probation hearing, and that she will stand in his defense. And a lot of people have an issue with that. Now, I don't condone violence of any sort. However, if you look at Rihanna, you've got to praise her because she's actually following the teachings of the Bible. She's following the teachings of spirituality. We cannot be in a spiritual frame of mind or talk about spiritual spirituality, minister spirituality, if we can't forgive people for what they've done. Again, it's not condoning the act of what the person did, but eventually you have to move on and you have to allow the person to move on. If you allow this stuff to fester in your system, you can create errors and challenges within you. You can create stress. You can create ulcers. You can have heart attacks. You can have all kinds of things. When I look at Rihanna or I read about the fact that she's forgiven him and she moves on from him, I think she has the highest level of spirituality ever before because a lot of people would not have the ability to forgive somebody that has inflicted pain on him. Now, if you look at Chris Brown, you almost might have to see that this guy is still a, a very young man. He's still a child. He's still a boy in, in our point of view. He still has a lot of maturing to do. He still has a lot of growing to do. But if we keep bashing him and degrading him, then this is how he's going to be. Because it's what we think in our consciousness is what we put, put forth out. It's almost like if we name something, then we're allowing it to grow. But if you look at Rihanna, she's saying, you know what? This happened. I'm over it. I'm focusing on my life. People need to move on, and they need to learn the aspect of forgiveness. It is a big thing, and a lot of people have to work towards that. And that's what she's done. And I have to give her, you know, I have to give her a hand for the fact that she's standing up and she's saying, you know what, I forgive and I'm moving on. And that's the way that um, spirituality actually works. What about you, Erlene? How do you feel on this topic? Um, I'm going to have to disagree with you <coughs> on some things. Uh, I do not want to get into anyone's personal business because, of course, that's a decision that they make. Um, but I do look at the message it's sending to maybe some um, women who have been in domesticated uh, incidents and have been beaten. And um, a lot of the times they do go back into the same relationship seeking forgiveness and then it being it's repeated again and again. Um, but I guess the thing that I want to touch on the most um, that came to mind was how the media shapes <coughs> all of this. Uh, <clears throat> because despite um, maybe sometimes what we have to say, what we develop in our minds, we're influenced by what comes through. And I did hear that driving in today that they did get back together. And I kind of thought, okay, how is this relevant to me? Why is this a flash on the um, radio station? Okay. It's a big deal, okay, because the, the announcer then says, oh, give your opinions online. And I'm saying, okay, so why do now I have to maybe stop my day and go and talk about this whole incident? Because I think from what it looks like, she's put it behind her, and he's put it behind her. What I may not have condoned in the whole thing is how they talked about he dumped his girlfriend right, right away, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> they were in the club kissing or whatever they were mm -hmm. doing, you know. And I said, well, to myself, what kind of a person is he? 
Was he really just with the girl for publicity's sake? Or did he really love his ex-girlfriend or whatever? Because for me, I don't know. You know, if I'm with somebody, I don't know if it'd be so easy for me to just, okay, sorry, can't be with you, on to the next one. Oh, actually, it's my ex, you know? So that shows to me maybe some kind of character flaw in him that he was using the other woman to cover up some other things. Second part of the thing that I'm not really um, <coughs> particular about, I don't think I've really heard Chris Brown's side. Um, I heard a lot from Rihanna. I saw her interview when it first happened in 2009. I think it was with Diane Sawyer. I saw the recent interview. I YouTubed it. I didn't get to watch it um, when it came out with Oprah. And I heard her speak, and I heard her give her, well, the first one was kind of different than the second one, because the first one, she looked really, really hurt. And the, um, the second interview with Oprah, she seemed that she had gone through the healing process. And yes, she had forgiven him, but at the same time, I think Oprah was really concerned in that was she looking at it from a wrong angle? Like, yes, you can forgive someone, but at the same time, how are you um, kind of, I don't want to say protecting yourself from, hap from it happening again, but kind of like, is this, are you sure, 100% sure this is what you want to get back into? And it seemed that she'd already made up her mind. So, you know, regardless of what my opinion is <coughs> or your opinion, if you've already made up your mind about something, you're going to go forward and do it, you know? So I guess my whole thing about the whole situation it's not really my business. Um, I will give my opinion. I'm not sure if I, if I were Rihanna in her situation, um, would have went back to him. But then again, love does make you do some crazy things. So if they're soulmates and they're destined to be, you know, they're going to be. Because I even read somewhere that um, sometimes soulmates um, have, or twin flames, they don't always come together and are at peace. Sometimes there's friction, and that's how they kind of um, attract each other or something. I don't know if that's something to do with the past life or their current life, but I did read somewhere that not all the time, sometimes people in your soul groups, you might have some adversity, some challenges with them. But I guess in all in all, it's how you overcome it. So I do congratulate her, I guess, in overcoming it, but at the same time, I'm not sure if I would have done it um, in the way that she did it. Well, I have actually two questions for you. <clears throat> what is your definition of forgiveness in the spiritual realm? Um, and what do you perceive in the spiritual realm of the idea that if you perceive somebody is such a way, that means that that person is not going to change because you've already put a, a label on that person. Your consciousness is already f focused to say, okay, this person did this, so he's going to repeat this. Um, because in our world today, you know, everybody that abuses or whatever, people always say, well, that person's going to do it again. That message is that that energy is being put out there. So they're just saying the person's going to do it again. So eventually the person does do it again because that's what we expect. Ho well, hold on. That's what we expect of that person. In spirituality, that's not how things are supposed to work. We're supposed to be able to see the God. In, in, in Chris Brown or we even look I'm not a Mitt Romney fan but I can see I can see the God in him okay I, I have to be able to see that if I'm working in spirituality because you know in the Bible or whatever we're being taught in spirituality they keep telling you if you focus and only see the God in that person then that's what it will be so I want to under I'm trying to okay, understand well, your on, viewpoint I'll, I'll answer you but on some levels I have to I have to say that in order for how do I say this? Chris Brown, for me to change, Chris Brown has to want to change. Mm -hmm. Like, I can see the God in him all day long, but if he wants to run around like a devil, that's on him. But you were labeling him no, as I'm such not, a devil. No, but you I'm gave not, him the name no, the I'm devil. Not labeling him but you as just such said, I'm going to run around said, like the devil. I know, because his <coughs> actions are going to manifest. If he's out there, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm labeling him, but it's just what I'm seeing. And yes, he might be a holy person. He might be a spiritual mm. person. But for me, behavior also correlates maybe with your lifestyle. If you're a spiritual person, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you, and I'm not saying you probably wouldn't do it, but mm -hmm. I'm a spiritual person. This is what I do not do. Right. I might not be out there partying till whatever time, right. getting drunk, popping 
uh, marijuana, whatever, mm -hmm. pills, whatever. You know what I mean? Right. That, to me, is not a definition of a spiritual person. Um, not saying that you can't have a drink or something like this, but taking <coughs> it to the excessive limits, which I'm not going to lie, I probably have done in my past, you know. But that's a part of, like you said, growing up. Right. He is growing up. And that's another thing I didn't, I didn't bring up earlier. These are children who have hit success very early, mm -hmm. okay? They're in the limelight, and regardless, they're living completely different from the average person. Right. Everything is kind of probably at a faster pace. They're yes. having to make adult decisions right. on a very short time frame. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that anybody is perfect at all, but I do believe you're going to walk the walk. If you said you're like this, maybe you should act like this, you know? I and, agree. And I'm not going to label somebody, but to answer yourself, what is forgiveness? It's overcoming many things. For me, forgiveness is overcoming some fears that I might have had about certain people, you know, mm -hmm. and things. Uh, forgiveness is coming face to face with maybe someone I do not like, and <laughs> I have to overcome that and somehow find in my way and like you said see the God quality in them right you know and I definitely I give her kudos for doing that but at the same time I'm still gonna um, I'm still gonna say I haven't really seen and you know it's funny because he might have been doing a lot of stuff but it's again what gets shown to us about right. the person right what society chooses to show I think he has done a lot of community service mm -hmm. out there um, and even on the um, BET award, I think he broke down and was crying or something. Right. And that was right before he got really super successful. Mm -hmm. I like his music. I listen to it all the time. You know, but at the same time, that is probably going to be with him for the rest of his life. You know, I sure that will. mistake. Um, and we've all made mistakes. I'm not a saint up here. Um, <laughs> but you guys probably <laughs> won't hear about what I've done. And that's okay. You know, but to have it on film, mm -hmm. you know, because that's the lifestyle he he is. It's constantly when his name pops up, Google search, you're going to yeah, see that Yeah, which is bad. You know? Which is bad. And that that's probably um, the fault of us as human beings, mm -hmm. you know. We aren't as easily to forgive. But something that kind of I notice is that as time passes, the sting hurts less. Right. You know? That's true. So I think maybe they, they did have a strategy, their publicists, about, okay, you guys want to be together, give it a couple years, you know, let things die down, and then you can do it. Just, I'm not sure he should have maybe had a girlfriend. And done well, it. I mean, he's a guy. <laughs> okay, I don't want to stereotype. I don't. I mean, guys, women do that. They have girlfriends. They cheat or they don't cheat. There's some people that are extremely faithful. I think the fact that he had a girlfriend. But you touched on something. When you have a twin flame or or, or a twin or a twin soul, you know, there's some attra there's a tr an attraction that you can't just stop. You ju just can't stop. And so he stated. Um, I read somewhere where he stated he couldn't stay with the girl anymore because it. His friendship with Rihanna was hurting her. So I kind of commend him on not staying with the girl anymore because he knows what his feelings are for Rihanna. Rihanna knows what her feelings are for Chris Brown. So it's better for him to have left that relationship than continuing hurting that no, girl. No, I agree. If you don't, um, and I've had this experience happen, it hurts. If you don't love someone, <laughs> don't stay with them just because, you know, and then find out later <laughs> you yeah. weren't really with them in the first, first place, place, you know? Like, to me, that's kind of, like, idiotic and um, not fair. No, um, it isn't fair. It's, it's not fair to both partners, especially the one that's getting cheated out of oh, giving mm -hmm. um, the most in the relationship. Right. And so I do uh, commend him on doing that. Um I just, I'm not sure. And I guess she probably knew it was coming, too. Because right, right. There's so much. On the, yeah. Um, the show. <laughs> and, <laughs> a little um, smooch. Yeah, and then, you know, some rendezvous here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> she had, to, I mean, and, and you know what? His girlfriend was not stupid. She could have left that relationship a long time that's ago. True. She might have stayed with him because he's Chris Brown, you yeah, know. It true. gives her some kind of not notoriety for herself mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, like I said, I commend him for the fact that, you know, he was like, peace out. God, deuces, like you always say, juices. Deuces. Um, that it was time for him to leave and that, he, you know, maybe Chris Brown and Rihanna are going to take baby steps. I don't know. Um, 
all I can say is bless them and pray for them and hope that, for, that everything um, results in the best way, that they have a good relationship, a good friendship. Um, she did mention on Oprah, I believe, that you know, she didn't ever see herself going back to him, but she said he was the love of her life, and that is something that is hard to get rid of. Now, I've never been totally in love with somebody. I think I was in love once in my 100 years here on Earth. <laughs> and um, it is a, it is a pain, very painful experience when you um, and that person separate. And you, it's almost like you want to die. Yeah, it, is it is that painful. It's very suffocating. Um, and I think she went through a really rough time yeah. in that because, like I said, everything... For the average person, you're going through it, but now you're going through it in front of the whole world. So exactly. it's like, oh my God, my life is being played. My personal life is being played over and over, over and, and over. over again. But at the same time, I have to keep going. I have to build my career. You know, I have to still be there for my family and friends. So I think there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And what I did like about the Oprah interview is that they kind of showed her in a natural environment right. more so. Um, not in that um, I'm a pop star and mm -hmm. this is what I do. I'm back home. I'm in Barbados. I don't really have much makeup on. Right. And this is who I am. This is where I grew up. So to me, that made it seem more real. And I guess that's right. why they went on location and did that. But again, I would love to hear Chris Brown's side. Yeah, I mean, I really you're would. right. <laughs> you're right. Um, I would love to hear what he has to say. Um, you're very right. Uh, we have never heard or he has never given an interview. I don't know how many people want to interview him, but he's never really been given the chance to give his side of the situation, why he did what he did out of frustration. It still doesn't condone what he did. Um, he does have a history in his past that his mother was abused. So he saw that um, all of his life. Um, he said he would never do that, but he snapped. So it would be great. Um, to get that kind of, to see where his mindset is, where, where his mindset was at that point. The other thing I wanted to talk about today was an incident that occurred yesterday for me. I came back from a, a business trip and I was on the plane. And after having only one hour of sleep, Natalie was trying to sleep, and, uh, but there was these two ladies behind me talking, 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 talking. And so I flew Southwest, and if anybody knew, knows about Southwest, is now they have this thing where you um, get to pick where you see. I mean, you literally stand in a line and you go wherever you choose. So it's really bad if you're in, in Section B, because then you know you're sitting in the back. But if you're in Section A, you sit in the front. So these ladies started talking about Christian science. Hmm. I said, God, I know you put me in the seat for some reason. So I listened to their conversation. Yes, I listened because they were so loud. And they were basically defaming Christian science. Hmm. And so there was a, the one lady said, oh, is this, is this like Scientology? And the one woman said, no, not really. But they were trying, the lady was trying to explain that this one person she knew was kind of raised in Christian science. And they were talking about how in Christian science, we see the good in everyone. And, but, but for them, the religion was kind of weird and all this stuff. Now, we were about to land because I didn't say anything. I said, Lord, help me, help me not to say anything to these women until this plane lands on the ground <laughs> and I can unbuckle my buckle. So we land and as soon as I could unbuckle, I unbuckled start, and I stood up and I said, you know, I overheard your conversation. And I said, well, I was ordained in Christian science. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and yeah. I said, before you start talking about something, don't you think you should educate yourself about it? I said, because people are listening to you. And if somebody that really doesn't know anything about Christian science and they're listening to you, they're going to assume what you're saying is the right word. And I said, you are not talking right. And I said, you know, Christian, and I started to explain what Christian science was. You know, we don't believe in sin, death, the d disease and stuff like that because we believe that we really truly believe in God, believe in God and we come from God. We have an unwavering faith in the presence. So we can't believe in things, you know, things like that. God said, he gave us everlasting life. How can, I, how can I believe in death? You know, when we leave here, we go to the astral plane, that we transition, we're done here, and we have some other work to do. That's basically what it is. We don't believe in sin. How can you come upon the earth and have already sinned? You cannot possibly have sinned. You haven't done anything, and we don't accept this, whatever, the sins of the Father, like they like to put it. We don't believe in disease because God can only give us good. 
So I, I, you know, I was explaining these things to them. And the first thing that the woman says to me, she says, well, are you, are you saved in the name of Jesus? I said, well, I don't do that talk. I don't know what that talk is, but all I can tell you is that I follow the King James Bible. It's the same thing that you guys, that you guys read, but I find a mystical interpretation. I said, we are the keys to unlocking the Bible because there is a deeper message than reading it on the surface like you apparently do. You're reading it on the surface. I said, you know, the Ku Klux Klan can read the same Bible that we are reading, and they see that uh, God said the black people are the devils. Now, I'm reading the Bible. I don't see that. So everybody has their own interpretation. Then the woman starts telling me, well, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not going into the gates of heaven. I said, how are you going to tell somebody that's in the Middle East that they, if they don't believe in Jesus, they're not going into the gates of heaven? I tried to explain to her, you know, the, the reason that there's so many religions, there, the reason that there's so many spiritual modalities is because God wanted us to see his beauty in every single religion, that we are supposed to embrace everybody. I then told her that, you know, there is a Messiah in each religion. It doesn't have to be Jesus, but you have to allow people to choose the thing that moves them. Mm -hmm. You cannot push people to say, well, it's only Jesus and Jesus is the only way. I can give you a definition of Jesus. Jesus was born. He had a job to do. He had a mission. You say, okay, you, you want to listen? Come over. You don't want to listen? That's your prerogative. God gave you free will to listen to me or not. But I am no better than you. Don't put me on a pedestal. I am your brother, and I'm here to teach you something. I'm here to teach you that the kingdom is yours if you want it. You just have to believe in yourself, believe in God, and you can be as prosper prosperous and as successful as you want or need to be. But do not put me on a pedestal and act like I'm all. We are all one together. We are all chosen people to do wonderful things on this earth. But to put somebody on a high pedestal when he had a job to do, you have a job to do. You're a creative spirit. You have to create for the world. I do many things. I could, the list is too long. I can't even talk about this, this stuff that I do. <laughs> but uh, we are all here for a certain purpose. At the end of the conversation, the lady apologized to me because she knew that she should not have spoken about something she did not understand. You must go out there and educate yourself. And I tell these people, I say, you can't force something on it, somebody. Do you ever listen to anybody that wants to force their message on you? I don't. That's the worst thing that you can do for me. But if I want to understand somebody, I will contact somebody. I will get a book on Hinduism or Buddhism and try to educate myself to see where that person is coming from. So if somebody comes to me, that's into Buddhism or Hinduism, I can relate to them on the same level. But I'm not going to throw Jesus in there. I'm just not going to do it because that's not what they believe in. I hear where you're coming, and I'm just going to play the other side of the field mm -hmm. for one moment. <laughs> um, I think sometimes, or maybe do you think, that has a lot to do with their upbringing if they're very... Um, not necessarily closed-minded, but if they weren't really taught to accept mm -hmm. others and to um, understand that there are different religions and just like in Hinduism there are um, polytheistic gods you know mm -hmm. they believe in different um, uh, gods meaning different things for them you know and some maybe Christian people might look at that and say mm -hmm. oh that's devil worshiping or something mm -hmm. like this you know because it, like you said it's the uh, not really seeking to understand another so I think um, you did a great thing by talking to the women, but at the same time, they're probably older, right? So they, they grew were up. Older. Yeah, they grew up probably with a very strict upbringing about um, this and that. And see, that's how I, I see myself now. I look at people a little bit more deeply, like kind of try to figure out where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, not saying I wouldn't have jumped in or anything, but that also helps me see where they're coming where their understanding is, what level they're at, because I was fortunate to be able, uh, maybe in my household, not necessarily, oh, it's strict Catholicism, that's it, nothing else, mm -hmm. nothing more, nothing above, to the side, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I liked reading, and I liked interacting with people, and I went to a school where different people were there, and so I was, at a very early age, exposed, mm -hmm. oh, 
This is what happens um, for Jewish holidays. This is how we celebrate. Okay, it's Kwanzaa. You know, in school they would uh, they right. brought that up. It's um, Chinese New Year. You know, so you got different influences from right. here and there, more accepting of a, um, a melting pot culture. But I think if you're talking to someone who lives in South Dakota on a farm and you know drives 20 miles to the nearest Baptist church, you know their view might not be as grandiose, but that doesn't, for me, um, get them off the hook from maybe accepting another person's point of view. Yeah, no, I agree with what you're saying, and the reason that I know they were a little bit, well, not a little bit, closed-minded is because they talked for an hour about what they believed in, mm -hmm. minus, you know, the, the Christian science part. But there's TV. There's newspaper. There's the radio. You cannot internet you <laughs> cannot possibly know that there are other cultures out there. there there's no way there's no way and so I agree a lot of these people are raised in this thing and the only thing they believe in is what they've been taught what they've been bro brought up with oh you're going to hell if you don't go into Jesus I mean it's just ridiculous to me but you know like I always say everything happens for a reason and you know God moved me to get up and say something to it because these people need to be educated. I don't care what they believe in. Great, it moves them. They're so happy. They're doing their Bible study and all that stuff because they were talking about that. <laughs> Fabulous. But don't infringe on the rights of others mm -hmm. and tell them they're not going into the gates of heaven because they don't believe what you believe in. I have friends that are atheists. I have friends that believe in energy, but they don't believe in God. And you know what? I love them. These people are good people. They walk around, they help people all the time. They don't have to believe in God. I know what I believe in. People are individuals and people need to be allowed to be individuals and seek out the thing that is seeking them. We don't have right. We, and, and so, so I said, you, I told them you are judging somebody else based on your own perception of what your religious beliefs are. There are too many wor people in this world and you're, you're condemning them without even knowing them. And I think that's a sad state of affairs. And so I bring this story because I think that we need to work all work together so that we understand one another better, so that we can help one another better, better to understand the oneness that we have in whatever religion that we have, whatever you want to call it, Allah, God, Spirit, Father, Mother, God, whatever you want to call it, so that we all can work together. Because that is what I believe that the universe, the energy, the God wants us to do is work together as brothers and sisters united under one sun, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, Erlene Germain is going to teach us about angel cards, the master, ascended master cards, and then she's going to do something on color. It's going to be fascinating, so <laughs> stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hi, we're back, and I'm Reverend Natalie Jean, and this is the F Infinite Elevation Hour. And I'm here with my host, uh, Erlene Germain. And we're back here, and Erlene <laughs> is going to show us some wonderful things with the Ascended Masters cards. She's going to teach us how to do them. Yes, right before we do that, I want to touch on color. Um, I have, no, I have this wonderful book. I want to do that because that's a little bit more fun and interactive, so we'll both get into it, okay? So, um, I have this wonderful book, Healing with Crystals and Chakra Energies, and um, if you want to take a shot of that, that's quite all right, but I'll be referencing through it probably throughout the show these coming weeks. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit about color and how important and maybe how unimportant it is in your life. Um, and how you can do some changes to add maybe some color. I'm a colorful person. I love color. I do not wear black. Only black dresses, you know. You have to have your little sexy black dress, right? But <laughs> I don't know if I said that on air, but <laughs> um, he's a dork. No. <laughs> but um, outside of that, and um, I have many people who will test. Even my mother noticed that I do not wear black shirts. That she's like, why? And I said to her, um, I just feel that they shut off my energy. And I always, um, ever since I came out of depression, wanted to um, 
be a little bit more vibrant. So whenever I do laundry, I have all these colorful colors. I started noticing it's like a little rainbow pile. But um, so today I just want to touch up maybe on a couple of colors, maybe to enhance in your life. The first one is red at Infinite Elevation. We do love the color red. And um, you want to add red in your life when there's a lack of enthusiasm and interest or if you're feeling a little tired because it's that color that gives you a little bit of energy but feistiness at the same time. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to overdo it because right. it could seem a little aggressive. So okay. you have to kind of have a little bit of a balance with red. But if you want to, you know, look a little hot, H-O-T, <laughs> you can maybe get some um, red lipstick. I like to do that. If you have a black dress, you put some red lipstick, you know. Mm, let it pop. <laughs> there you go. It pops out. Or you have a red piece, you know, some red shoes or some earrings, mm -hmm. you know, a little, little red. Right. Kind of entice, you know. Entice what? <laughs> 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 All right. And that's why we celebrate Valentine's Day. Right? All right. <laughs> In the month of February right. when it's cold outside, you know. You want to entice with the red. <laughs> yeah. Entice. <laughs> um... So the, the next color is orange, and um, orange is kind of a color, I like to call it like the energy, like the sun. Um, if you need a little bit of a pick-me-up, you know, a burst of energy, yeah, there you go. Orange is that go-to color, um, and it's also good for... Uh, uh, they say a resentment of changes in familiar routines or, th or things that are obsessive. Um, if you have an obsession with things being in a certain place, mm. maybe to have that um, orange in your life. And also in times of stress, believe it or not. Um, orange is an excellent color to wear. They can also, um, they say, help the body to return to a state of balance. Okay. And also, you know, when you're sick, uh, taking vitamin C or taking an orange juice actually mm. helps the immune system out as well. So that's another color. Um, we all like the money. Um, money, sorry. We do like money. <laughs> <laughs> the next color is green. I don't know. I got excited. <laughs> that is a great uh, color to wear to attract prosperity into your life and also to bring about growth um, mm. and also as we can see, if you do feel that you need some new ideas, mm -hmm. you want um, help uh, fixing some problems in some relationships, green is also a, a good color for me that brings about that balance mm -hmm. that I need. I need to refresh myself, rejuvenate. I don't know, I'll, I'll go near some plants or go start tending to my garden of uh, wonderful plants that I have and water them and care for them. So green is a wonderful color to have. So again, I will be sharing some more colors with you guys um, in the coming weeks. And I think I have a little game that Natalie and I will play also. Not today though, <laughs> <laughs> with color. The next thing that I wanted to show um, were the Ascended Master Cards. And um, here they are. You can get these at any, um, I guess bookstore, that's where I got mine. And you can order them on Amazon.com um, too. Okay. Um, so the, the lady who makes these, it's kind of faded out because I've had them for a while, is Doreen Virtue and she has a PhD. Um, but these are kind of like, I use them as little guidance and reference cards and Natalie and I will do a couple now. And so what you'll do is, and this is not anything like, you know, voodoo or witchcraft or whatever. Um, I like to do them if I need just a little assistance from um, Ascended Masters or spirit out there, spirit in, spiritual energy, and what I need to work on if I have a question about something. So what you would do is take your cards, and I like to just, you know, like you're shuffling a deck, you know, you just shuffle them through. Obviously, I am not a casino gambler, right? And that's what I was doing. <laughs> 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 I'm getting cards, and I don't know. <laughs> that is not my occupation. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to um, consecrate the cards because with the, with the cards come a lovely little book, like a little guidance. And they have a section on, um, you can silently say it or say it out loud. And I'll say it out loud because, you know, we want to hear this. I ask that all of my readings with the ca these cards be accurate and specific and bring blessings to everyone involved. Please help me stay centered in my higher self so that I may clearly hear, see, 
feel and know the divine messages that wish to come through these readings. Okay? And you don't have to say that. You can say something else or not say anything at all. Maybe ask your question directly. Right. And prior to showing the cards, Natalie asked for a three-card reading, right? Sure did. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to give her that. So would you like to pick your cards? How would you like to do this? I'm touch the card. Okay, here we go. There we go. So mm -hmm. Natalie's going to pick her cards. I, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I have or, to be a little interactive. Do I shuffle them or since you're in the shoe fill? Um, <laughs> whatever you're being led to do. But you can put your energy on the card. Um, pick the cards. See, I like to spread them out kind of mm. and then be led to which card that I should be picking. So she's going to pick three cards for a past, present, and future mm -hmm. reading. And she's shuffling it her way. <laughs> casino style on this night. Oh, casino, casino style. style. Blackjack table? Mm -hmm. Blackjack. <laughs> Blackjack table. <laughs> they go really fast, though, at the casino. But they always have to show the cards for the camera. How do I know this? I'm not sure. <laughs> she is multi. <laughs> I have not been to a casino in a long time. So. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. It's true. That's I have what it. he said. Okay. So which one is your past present? The bottom one? Yes, that's the one I chose okay. first. All right. So as you can see, I have not touched these cards. So we're going to <laughs> go past, present, and future. So her first card is drum roll. Artistic expression. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so, Miss Natalie, have you been in the past, or maybe you need to <laughs> work on some artistry there? Let's see what else comes up, okay? <clears throat> in the present moment, she needs to stay focused. Hmm. Maybe some things have been. <laughs> this is why I like working with her. We <laughs>, laughs and dorkiness. <laughs> All right. And drum roll, what's coming up in the future when we stay focused and we express ourselves artistically, right? Drum roll. The power of joy. Yay, you got the laughing Buddha with the rainbow. Yay, that is amazing. Some good times are ahead for you, Natalie. Yay. Are you going to read it? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> those are my simple explanations, just looking at the cards. So let's see. For artistic expression, all I do is flip through my book right here. And, of course, Natalie can, um, later on, she can go into the, you know, di different um, explanations. I'll just read a little bit about that. Okay? So maybe they're suggesting that you take a class or learn a new artistic skill. One of your loved ones is an artist, which is true. I do know someone in your family who is an artist. Express your true feelings. Your life's purpose involves an artistic endeavor, such as writing or playing music, or maybe <laughs> even singing. <Isn't> that annoying? <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, I know why I picked the first one. Okay, let's see. Stay focused. Hmm, let's see what happens when we stay focused. Be assertive, be assertive with demands upon your time, Natalie. Oof, Lord Keep mercy. your promises to yourself. Ooh, Lord. Oh, Commit geez. to your priorities. There's so many. Spend time each day devoted to projects that are dear to your heart. Oh my gosh, how? <laughs> I need five clothes. <laughs> Detoxify your diet to help your mind to be clear and focused. I got to eat what I want. Okay, yeah, I'll work on that. Okay, I know. I've been working on it, actually. I went and bought You're better at that than I am because I like to, I like what I want to eat. No, I know. <laughs> I do, too, but I had to um, cut back a little bit because my pants weren't really buttoning up. Okay, <laughs> that's a side topic. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. The power of joy. Here we go. What's up ahead? Stay positive and filled with faith, faith to manifest your desires into reality. Find the humor in this situation. Enjoy a good laugh. I think we're doing that right now. Um, develop hobbies that bring you pleasure. Mm. To find your life's purpose, do what brings you joy. I mean, with all the cards, the cards that I chose are so significant because I asked a specific question. And they asked, and they, and they, they gave me the answer that I needed to hear. Um, I'm not going to say what it is. No, and that's between you. You don't ever have to reveal that, yeah. you know? Um, and never feel that with anything, you know, what is between you and spirit. But it's right on, but it's right on, it's on point. Well, I have these cards at home, so I can read them with a glass of wine. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> At home. <laughs> At home. <laughs> uh, wine is actually very good for you now. Remember, Jesus had a glass of wine, red wine. Even the doctors tell you that a glass of wine is very good. No, and that's fine. You know, it's, I think it's the way you said it. I laughed a little bit. No, you know. That's all right. No, yeah. no, <laughs> I'm gonna have my little PJs on. Yeah, and no, and and that's when I do. Um, you know, I do my cards sometimes early in the morning mm -hmm. or at night. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even in the day if I feel you know the need. But um, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> it's mostly when I need a quiet moment of reflection and also a little bit of direction. So I'm glad that you were able to do the cards with us. Today. Amen. That was a lot of fun. So, All you know, right. you can purchase these at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble or any bookstore, really. Um, and enjoy the time that you have with uh, Ascended Masters and Spirits. And these cards really do work. If you really work with them, they will give you answers that are unbelievable. But you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in the power of spirit working through you to get these messages to you. Now, you can still use them at the same time and get messages in your dreams. Because I know that I've used them a couple of times, get messages there, and then I'll get more messages. Oh, really? That's amazing. I'll get more, more messages in my dream. So. Um, and just to, uh, to add a little bit, the other day, a friend of mine had a um, challenge they were going through, and they called me, like, crying hysterical. Mm -hmm. It's one of my um, coworkers. And what was funny, something told me when I see her next, bring the cards. And um, I brought the cards, and I said, I hope you don't, mine but I think this would benefit you right and she's like oh in my religion I don't believe right, yeah, in yeah. those things and I said well what things are you exactly talking about <laughs> and she's like oh you know and I said no I really don't know because <laughs> these aren't I don't right. know what you think these cards these are just guidance cards right. and then I had to kind of show her and she was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so once we did them she was like Oh my God, this really helped me. Thank you so much. And I said, yeah, okay, you're welcome. So I'm glad I listened to that message. Right. And I was able to also open her up, like we were talking about earlier, not being so close-minded, because I think a lot of people have misconception. I remember even going when Borders was around mm -hmm. and I bought a set of tarot cards. The lady ringing them up, she was kind of like, <laughs> looking at me all funny. Like I was right. into something that Weird. I shouldn't be into. Right. And I just was smiling because they had to go through the special case mm -hmm. to get them and blah, blah, blah. But I had always wanted to learn. Right. Um, and I was willing to teach myself and read up on it. So, you know, like Natalie said, these cards can be very beneficial and helpful if you're willing to work with right. them. You know, maybe not the first go round if you're just kind of like, what's going on? Even the first go round, I think I've, I've had success with them. But the more and more you kind of get comfortable mm -hmm. with yourself and the cards, they do answer a lot of questions um, that maybe you're struggling with or just need some extra advice on. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, I'm going to enlighten you with uh, the Judgment Series in Spiritual Science. A lovely book by Emma Curtis Hopkins that will really teach you about faith, wisdom, using your word. It is fabulous. You know she's my girl. And maybe she'll be your girl too soon, too. <laughs> so we'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hi, I'm Reverend Natalie Jean, and this is the Infinite Elevation Hour, and we're back. I'm here with my co-host, Erlene Germain, and I'm going to talk about Judgment Series in Spiritual Science, and let me remind you who Emma Curtis Hopkins was. She was born in 1849, and I love her. <laughs> Basically, she started with Christian Science with Mary Baker Eddy. They had a little falling out. And then, you know, she went on to form her own Christian Science School. She ordained 50,000 people. But her basic premise um, is that we don't believe in sin, sickness, death, disease. We believe in the speaking our truth about ourselves. We believe in our consciousness. We believe in speaking only positive words and removing negative thoughts out of our system because negative thoughts, you know, it can create errors and challenges. We don't believe in the human conditioning. We believe in spirituality. 
She is the teacher of teachers, as we like to call her. She basically was one of the first women in the New Thought movement. New Thought is basically an idea of keeping your consciousness clear and knowing that whatever you put in your mind is what you're putting, putting forth. So if you're seeing lack around you, that means some, Emma will tell you that if you see a homeless person while you're walking around, that means that you have lack in your mindset. So we need to change our consciousness so that we can only see supply. Dollar bills, I don't know, gold just dropping out of the sky. And then we'll know that we are abundant and supplied with all the things that we need. But new thought is basically, you know, just having a positive mind and knowing that no error, illusion, no person, places, or conditions has the power to bind our spirit. But all we have to remember that we are one with God and that if we walk the walk and talk the talk, all things will be added unto us. So I wanted to, since we were talking about forgiveness, I wanted to talk about her chapter on forgiveness, which is chapter 10. So the first thing she puts on here, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping things. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Earth is rounded whole, all I am. The God quality in me says a few things in its own tongue perpetually. If I listen as a Moses, I speak with my tongue audibly, and it sounds like this text, Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. When I come to talk of the round earth and my relation to it, for am I am not able to see cattle and creepy things, except I let them be seen. I have certain qualities within me which extend by fine wires outwardly at the tip end of those wires that go forth from me. I must see cattle. I, if I extend another set of qualities at the tip ends there, thereof, I see men. All things proceed forth from me which I see anywhere. There is, therefore, here at my headquarters, a power to transform those cattle and creepy things into angels, into mountains, <laughs> into anything. Let me repeat this. <laughs> there is, therefore, here at my headquarters, a power to transform those cattle and creepy things into angels, into mountains, into anything. The power stands here at my headquarters. There is one voice in me that Moses called God. It is the urging voice. It wants to keep me pushing out my wires all the time and making new things to look at. Sometimes this voice has no kind of judgment, for it urges me to make rules and regulations that are as burdensome and irksome to myself as for the creatures at the end of the fine wires. For instance, this urging voice said, keep on multiplying and replenishing everything. But I do not want to multiply and re replenish the things called cattle and creepy things. I want to abolish that kind of visibility. Even if Moses, my tongue interpretation, calls these things symbols, I do not want them multiplied. Even if cattle and earth mean solid friends and prosperous affairs like Joseph and Gen Genesis, I do not want them. What I do want is to cease from this projecting fine wires from my headquarters and having an internal round of people and affairs to meet. The tongue that I have let the sway in my headquarters is Moses. If I do not cease from his host of creatures at the end of my fine wires, I am like the king in fable, in the fable who set a fool on the throne in his place, and of course the fool was king. The true king has abdicated. How should he get this throne back again? So I, if I let the Moses tongue get to describing the God in me, will keep on dealing with an urging God all the time. It is not till I strike the tongue called Jesus Christ that I see any way to stop the cattle in creeping business and extend from my throne a kind of people and environment that I myself want to see. The Jesus Christ name is the secret tongue. But if sounded upon constantly, it becomes the loud tongue. Moses is all hushed. The Jesus Christ tongue in me starts up with my uttering the name over and over. This makes the nations appear to be angry. They rise up and heave and stir and splash. This is because 
The fine wires out from which they project forth from me are being withdrawn. Jesus Christ is not Moses. The name hushes the projecting sounds and calls them home for me. I am for the first time feeling something like rest from the Moses' tongue. The Jesus Christ tongue which stops the multiplying and replenishing of cattle, men, strange actions and worlds has an undertone. That undertone comes to prominence as I proceed to let the Jesus Christ name and doctrine stop the old law of things. It is a still more powerful tongue than the name Jesus Christ. John the Revelator called it a new name. But the Jesus Christ name is the new king I set on the throne to put down the material set of sights that confront me. There is no urging God in Jesus Christ's administration. I hear only one tone forever, and that is not urging my storage of tongues to shoot any wires forward into a world with any creations at their tip ends. The name is a drawing power for those tongues that, like fools or like sensible beings, are still eager to get the upper hand in my kingdom. No name is such a swallower up in the kindness as this name. <clears throat> I have noticed that Moses' name never had any kindness in its projecting prowess. It talked of laws of good and laws of evil continually. The name of Jesus Christ causes all things to insist on being good in my sight or dying at once. But it is certain that the name that is under Jesus Christ, the soft, unheard tone, is not speaking of either good or evil. It tells something beyond sweeter than the story of the good. As the name Jesus Christ swallowed up all things the Moses tongue had projected, so the unheard soft name swallows up all the name Jesus Christ has manifested. In this clothing of tongues that I have folded myself with, I will, take, I will let the name softer than the name Jesus Christ reign. As I take note of the name that is softer and finer than the name Jesus Christ, I find myself no longer looking outward and forward, no longer throwing out ideas outward over a planet to change conditions, but find all that fine wires brought home to my throne. He that sitteth on the throne is in charge of all the creations projected by the Moses name and also in charge of all the creations projected by the Jesus Christ name. They are all brought into fing his fingers. The time of the dead is come. It is rest. All the thoughts, all the feelings, all the senses are now drawn inward, backward, upward, and are in the name that has its sound under the name Jesus Christ. There's actually more to the story, but I'm going to stop here. But it's basically telling you that whatever you're thinking, whatever your, 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 your heart is telling you is what you're projecting out into the world. If there are certain things that you don't want to see projected out in front of you, you basically have to remove those thoughts from your consciousness. Now, if <coughs> I don't want to see lack, I'm not going to see lack. I'm just going to see green. I'm going, like you talked about the green color. I'm going to just envision that I'm in just an abundant su supplied being a spiritual being, as God has told me that we all um, have inherited the kingdom. But, you know, if we really don't want things to come about in our life, it is really up to us. A lot of times, you know, people want to blame God for our situation. But we come from God. The power is within us. We create our lives. We create our destinies. We create our path. So if we want to evolve, if we want to be more illumined, we have to have a clear understanding of how to use our power, how to manifest this greatness that is already inside of us. We must learn to love our surroundings. We must not judge other people in their belief systems, but we must embrace. We can listen. We don't have to agree, but we can have wonderful conversations. Erlene and I don't often agree. We often agree on a lot of things, but there's some things we disagree. But it doesn't take away from our friendships because we are both unique individuals with ha very different viewpoints on certain topics. And that is the beauty of the individuals that walk on this earth. We all have a different way of seeing life, of, of getting to that point of understanding our oneness with spirit, our oneness with whoever um, that you believe in. You need to, to focus on that. You need to remember it is all in you. All the power rests in you. 
Now, for me, sometimes when things are trying to come upon me, tell, people tell me entities, energies, oh, they won't like what you're doing. I tell them God is the only power acting in my life. Therefore, there are no persons, places, or conditions that can bind my spirit or move me out of the path that I know is the right direction. I, too, can be guided by God. Erlene is guided by God. The rest of the world can be guided by God. We can get messages from God directly. We don't have to rely on our spiritual teachers or other people to tell us what God's intentions are for us. You know, sometimes when you're too close to people, they'll give you messages because they're jealous of you. They don't want to see you grow. So work on being intuitive and tune in to that God in you to know that whatever you want to see, it is up to you and no one else. Get away from all the people that are telling you what you're doing is wrong. You can say love and light, peace, be still, whatever you want to say. But focus. Like the things that I need to focus, stay focused on my thing. I am focused and ready to set the world afire and get people moving and grooving. Erlene, any <laughs> last thoughts? <laughs> um, just to kind of add uh, to what you were talking about, um, I think sometimes we go through challenges and tests mm -hmm. of our faith, of our um, belief in ourself, because um, I go through them all the time, but <clears throat> I guess, um, and that also affects maybe our prosperity right. um, and what we um, think we want to have or should have or, you know, sometimes your mind gets into all of these um, concoctions, you know, I mean, I do, I start comparing myself to this and that, right. and then I have to like, be still, go within, mm -hmm. I know what I have to do, you know, I have to regroup, kind of like pull the rope back, okay, none of that stuff is relevant or true. You know, I know the truth about myself. I know the truth about how good I am. And I know how good God is. Mm. So therefore, what I'm seeing right now, I'm not really seeing. <clears throat> it's an illusion. It's a test. And once I'm able to get that wrapped around and I overcome the challenge and I overcome it, and it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. You know, it's like mm. a walk in the park. <laughs> Now, yeah. you know, you feel the, uh, I think your mom had sold this to me once, um, after the storm is the cool breeze. Mm -hmm. You know, I think she likes to say that a lot. And um, it's kind of stuck with me because right. sometimes we go through storms, um, metaphorically, um, and maybe realistically. But when everything quiets down, it's this really nice cool breeze and maybe that rainbow comes out, right. you know. So that's the only thing I want to add to what you said. I think you summed it up very well. So... All right, so we'll be back on another segment of the Infinite Elevation Hour. I am your host, Reverend Natalie Jean, and this is my co-host, Erlene Germain. So we'll see you back at another time when some great and more interesting spiritual aspects and current events and all kinds of crazy ideas. See you then. Thank you.